Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service at Emmanuel Church this morning, and welcome to everyone online. Uh, there's a few notices. Um, yesterday and today, I spent two hours in the, uh, in the chapel as part of the 24-7 uh, prayer, and it just went like that, but it was such... I can't describe the experience of just being still and being alone with God and just listening to God um, and being filled with his love and his Holy Spirit. And I just would, can't encourage you enough, if you haven't signed up for a 24-7 prayer slot, it's, it's what we're doing between uh, Ascension Day last Thursday and Pentecost this Sunday that um, we're doing 24-7 prayer. So the chapel is open for prayer for 24 hours a day until Pentecost on Sunday. And there are still places to, to be filled. And if you would like to fill one of those spots, if you'd like to come in here um, with your family or your friends or alone, please have a word with Rich or Barbara Bancroft at the back um, and she'll, they'll sign you up. Or have a word with them about what it's about. But I can't, I can't encourage you enough. It's, it's, and there are people that have already done so that can testify to that as well. Um, there's no ABC 
fun and food or church lunch this week as it's half term. But Barbara's going to come and talk to us about what else is going on this week. Well, as you all know, it's a very, very special weekend this weekend, with it being the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And we certainly couldn't miss a point to have a party. And as most of you know, we are having an afternoon tea party from two till four. Everybody is welcome. Um, but anybody who is doing any cakes or still wants to make some cakes, uh, could you please bring them between around about 11 on either the Wednesday or the Thursday? If you want savouries, can you please bring your own savouries? But I'm aware of the fact that it's going to be very, very busy that day, very noisy, and some people might not want to come to that. So what we're doing on Sunday, we're having one of our bring and shares after the service. So please bring whatever you want to eat and to share with us on Sunday as well. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, just um, something I've remembered as well, that if you've already signed up for the 24-7 for the prayer slot or you want to, just a reminder that if the church doors are closed, the main church doors, there is a little side door here next to the chapel that will be um, taped open for you to come and go through there. Are there any birthdays? None. Oh. Angela, it's your birthday. Is your birthday today, Angela? On Wednesday. Great, it's Angela's birthday. Anyone else? No? Just Angela then. Let's sing happy birthday to Angela. just say I have yes you're right I got it mixed up with my notes thank you Bob just before I say that uh, I just want to say uh, well done Angela for being brave enough to put your hand up because there's a lot of people I think a bit, bit, don't have that courage so well done <laughs> yeah one notice I did miss out which is a very important one as well is that we're starting an alpha course on the 6th of June Monday the 6th of June it starts at 12 o'clock and it's meeting weekly through the summer. Um, we have a free lunch. And at the end of the course, there is an opportunity to get uh, to be baptised or confirmed if you've not yet done that and you'd wish to, to look into that. And it's also an opportunity, apart from all that, it's an opportunity to learn more about Jesus. And if you're, if you're curious, if you're sort of really wanting to know more, it's a great course. It's really easy, lovely discussions, lovely people and company and lovely food. So what is there not to like? So if you'd like to sign up for that, have a word with Rich. And uh, we can sort... That's Rich over there. <laughs> and we can sort that out. Thanks, Barbara, for reminding me about that. Okay. Let's start with our opening prayer. Let's pray. Loving Lord, fill us with your life-giving, joy-giving, peace-giving presence that we may praise you now with our lips and all the day long with our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now this is our first song that we're going to sing and it's a wonderful song and I encourage you not to just give this lip service but to, to really use this as a prayer to ask God, especially as we're praying the, thy kingdom come this week, to ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit. So let's stand and sing, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For those who are following the prayer journal for Thy Kingdom Come, today it's discussing the Holy Spirit as a spirit of fire. And the spirit of fire reforms us. It breaks us, melts us, moulds us and fills us and transforms us into new creations fit for the purposes of the Kingdom of God. But in order to do that, we have to come to God daily and acknowledge that we fall very short of what God requires of us. So please be seated and let's, in a moment of silence, just bring to, to the Lord all the things that we've done this week that we know are not what we should have done and things that we've left undone. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, we confess our sins to you. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have allowed dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as forgiven people, we're going to stand again and we're going to sing. In fact, no, I think we'll sit down for this. <laughs> Sorry, Lou. <laughs> uh, we're going to sing about that love of Jesus, such love pure as the whitest snow, paying the debt I owe. So let's sit while we sing this.
Thank you, Jesus. What I should have said at the beginning is that although there's no godly play, we do have some activities at the back for any children that wish to uh, go. The Cal Caroline's out there. If you, any children want to join in any of the activities um, that are set up there, you're quite welcome to do that. And let's just pray for the children that are here today. Father God, we thank you for the children in our church. We thank you for blessing us with them. And we ask, Lord, that they will meet with you today in a new and fresh way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, Carol is now going to come and read. This reading from the Old Testament is one of my favourite sections in Scripture. And it's Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 24 through 28. For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people, and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carol. Did you notice one of the words in that reading was about idols? What are idols? I suppose at the time of writing, idols were possibly different to what they are today, but what are our idols? We're going to watch a video to uh, get us thinking about that. So let's just watch that first. I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics. They were crazy. Well, you would think they were crazy if you didn't understand their culture and their religion. See, that's just the thing. They were worshippers of idols, and they took things to extremes. They painted their bodies. They wore these ridiculous costumes. They chanted. They danced. They, they made sacrifices to their idols. But they had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seemed like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario, this one over-the-top act of worship. You don't really relate, do you? Let's try it again. I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics. They were crazy. See, that's just the thing. They were worshippers of idols, and they took things to extremes. They painted their bodies. They wore these ridiculous costumes. They chanted, they danced, they, they made sacrifices to their idols. But they had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seemed like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario, this one over-the-top act of worship. Idol worship. It's not just about golden calves anymore. shot down in flames by all the football and rugby fans now. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong in being a football and rugby fan. <laughs> but this video does show that 
the, the football teams and the rugby teams and the sports teams can become idols. They can become the only thing important in their lives. I don't know if you watched the news yesterday with the, uh, with the fans, Liverpool fans, and they were, they were having a great time and there's nothing wrong with that. But the, the way they were worshipping their team, I thought if they could just put that much energy into, because at the end of the day, when, when they die and they face judgment, it's not going to be the Liverpool manager that says, well done, good and faithful servant, is it? It's going to be the Holy God, and uh, that is very important, and it's, and it's the truth. So, you know, we have to get it in perspective, we have to get it in the right order. So let's take a moment and think, what are our idols? What stops us? What gets in the way? of putting God first in our lives. Let's just take a moment to just reflect on that. When do we put them before, before God? Our social lives. Our work life, our finances, our relationships. How often do we forget that it is God that gave us all these things in the first place? And yet we put them before him. Forgive us, Lord. So now we're going to worship together by watching the music group video, River Wash Over Me, and let, let the Lord wash over us and cleanse us and make us new. Thank you. 
Right, that's it, I'm coming through loud and clear. I didn't tell Barb I was sitting here, so she's trying to work out which camera angle to use. <laughs> Sorry, that's the problem with coming late. I was late this morning, apologies. I've been in Barmston, and I thought I should really hang around there and talk to people there a bit, and I knew that. You were in very capable hands with Jackie, so, uh, well, here we are. Um, this is our first week without Richard, who is on his sabbatical, and, uh, and it feels like something of a new season. Um, in various ways, really, this is the first time that I have been in charge, if you like. Um, but also, it's a new season. If we look in our liturgical calendar, um, we have moved through the Easter season, and next week is Pentecost. And, and we'll talk about this more next week in our all-age service. Pentecost is seen as the birthday of the church. So that's a, a new season for us. And uh, for me, this is a bit of a baptism of fire as well. But for us here at Emmanuel, I, I do feel that this is a new season for us too, in that we have seen an awful lot of growth. Um, we've, we've got more people coming to our services. Uh, we've got children and, and we've got lots of other activities going on during the week as well. So when we look at today's passage, I'm kind of thinking it about it in those terms as well. But the passage we looked at from Ezekiel um, is uh, it's actually a passage about the restoration of Israel, um, who had been defiling God's name for generations. And this was God calling them back and punish the, punishing them, but also saying, I'm going to get you back together and we're going to sort this out. This was a new season for Israel. And one of the verses that didn't come up in our reading today, the verse just before, verse 22 of Ezekiel chapter 36, says this. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. It is not for your sake that I do these things. It is for the sake of my holy name. And I just want to start by saying, when we gather together for worship, when we do all of our things during the weekends, many, many things that this church does, let's remember, we're not just doing them for each other. Firstly, and most importantly, we're doing it as an act of worship to God. And when we think about it in those terms, it kind of raises the stakes a bit, doesn't it? That all we do for God is not for ourselves, not for others, but it's to worship God. Serving in the kitchen, gardening, helping out with fun and food, which is really hard because we have some challenges in there. We're doing that for the glory of God, and that changes our whole attitude to the manner in which we do things. Are we bringing glory to God? Are we restoring in the church into something that is like a sweet smelling incense? Let's have a little look at that reading verse by verse. And again, I've not told Chris about this, but I'll put some slides in there. So this is excellent. It's going well so far. This was the first verse that we heard that Carol brought to us. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all of the countries and bring you back into your own land. This was God saying to the Israelites, I'm going to regather you. I'm going to return you to where you belong. And now... I've got a couple of visual aids for this. I'm just going to put this here. Here we are, it's a mirror. Have a good look at yourself. Have a look. This is the gathered community of Emmanuel Church. Here we are. Look at, look at yeah, aren't they, aren't they a good looking bunch? Here we are, some people waving at the back there. Now, one of the things that you might notice as you look in there is you might think if you're close to the camera, oh, I don't like my face. Oh. Or you might also be looking and thinking, wow, we're such a mixed bunch, aren't we? We've, we're a diverse church. We've become more diverse since the pandemic. We're all different. We're all different. And you know what? God loves us all. God made us in his image. That's a really basic truth of the gospel, isn't it? But sometimes we need to be reminded that we were made in God's image. So whether you are feel like you've been regathered into God's presence or whether you feel like you've just returned here after 
months away and there might be still people online as well there just watching from afar but one day we'll hope to come back to church one day you hope to return here you know just have a little think how do we all get on with each other you know we're all really different as i've said and we all have different needs some people need a lot of encouragement and affirmation some people need a lot of prayer uh, some people share their whole lives on social media and some people are more private some people feel threatened by newcomers don't they let's let's be honest that happens sometimes you know in a new place where new people are coming together some people don't like change yeah and we and we're changing things all the time here aren't we yet all of us are made in god's image together we are the people of god we are different and yet we are the same let's just remember that let's just remember that next thing let's have a look at the, the next verse oh ah I need to go back to the one before and again should be another one in there if you arrow down Oh, there's, a, there's a flaw in the plot. There we go. The next verse is, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. So here we go. This is some of our baptism water. And uh, again, I... I mean, it, it feels like a bit of a gimmick, this, but I did use my bottle that I got from the Holy Land for this. And, uh, and actually, it's just water, you know. Oh, nice. Nice sound, that. But actually, one of our callings as Christians is to be baptised. And in baptism, we talk about washing away those blemishes and cleansing us from our sin. Though, when you look in the mirror and you see the blemishes, oh, I don't quite like the way I look. Actually, God loves the way you look. And in baptism, we celebrate that he's cleaned you, not from your physic, you know, how we look physically, but from the sins from within us. He cleanses us from that. But one of the things with baptism is that we often forget about is baptism is not just a call to, to, be, to be cleansed by the baptism water. It's also about an ongoing turning to Christ repenting is turning away from sin and turning to christ i love this might come as a surprise but when we do our services one of my favorite parts of the service is is confession coming together at the start of the service and say god i've messed up and knowing that we are cleansed from that but actually it does take an action confession is important it's our acknowledgement that we all we all mess <coughs> things up we're all in this together. It's a daily discipline. We put ourselves right with God. So let's not get proud and think that we don't need to confess. Sorry is, is the hardest word, isn't it? Politicians really avoid saying it because to say it, you're kind of admitting some kind of responsibility. But actually, responsibility is something that we have in every part of our lives. So I remember when I was a teacher, when there was a fallout in the playground, you get two children together, and uh, often you would try and work out what happened and you'd work out that someone had done something really bad and they needed to be sorry. But then the other child, the way they'd responded to that wasn't great either. So actually, it's important that they said sorry as well. Sorry is taking responsibility, not just for the things that we do, but the way that we, re we react when we might feel that we've been wronged and actually things that we say might not be particularly helpful in a situation so sorry is it's a good word someone once said admission of wrongdoing is not an admission of weakness but an admission of strength and another one while anyone could admit to themselves that they were wrong the true test is admission to somebody else isn't it that's so true isn't it let's move on to the next slide I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove you from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Chris, I wonder if you might just move on to the next. There should be an image that comes up. There we go. That's, a, that's 
a visual aid that I don't have with me, but I found that on a beach, and I've given that to my mum, who will be watching from York, and I think it's on her window ledge, so she took a picture of it from me. Have a, just a, obviously a stone that's shaped like a heart. But actually that verse that we heard there, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. This is about baptism by water is something that we do in the church and something we'll be doing in a few weeks here when the Archbishop of York does our baptism service at the end of our Alpha course. If you want to come, please do. It's going to be excellent. If you want to come on Alpha, hooray. I'd love to see more people come along to that. But baptism by water is something that we are commanded to do as a church. But at Pentecost, we celebrate the, well, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's helper, being with us every day, helping us through the, the tricky parts of life, the things that we struggle with, that knowledge that Jesus is with us. And what the Holy Spirit does is he transforms the heart within us. He transforms the stone heart within us and makes it into something new, something better. Um, the stone turns to flesh. The hard heart is softened by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we've got three things that we've looked at first. Being gathered, that's why we use the mirror. Being baptised and cleansed with the water. And now we've looked at being transformed by the Holy Spirit. That's what this passage is telling us from Ezekiel. Next slide, please. There we go, that's good. And I will put my spirit in you and move you out to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Now, in the book of Romans... Paul said, and he needed to remind the Jews of this, you are not under the law, you are under grace. Because the problem with the law, the Ten Commandments and everything in Exodus, was the Israelites could not follow them. They always kept messing up. But grace means that the law is important, but grace is even more important. And actually, when we accept God's grace into our lives, that transforming power of the Holy Spirit helps us to follow his laws. It's not, uh, we can't do it by human desire. We need help with that. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. I'm going to be honest, actually. This week has been quite a tough week here. Um, and for other things, for other reasons as well, it's been tough for me. Uh, but it has been quite hard. I realised that Richard has big shoes to fit into and uh, you know with such an exciting bunch of people and a lot going on it has been at times quite tough so I was kind of thinking well what does this verse say to us what are the laws by which we can govern ourselves um, these laws where we follow God's transforming power of the Holy Spirit to help us to, to make the right choices if you like that was a, a phrase I often use in the schools and I've thought about road signs. We all know our road signs, don't we? These, we know that these are there to keep us safe on the roads. And I thought some of these are quite helpful for us in a church community as well. Give way. You know, sometimes we might think we should say something, but actually sometimes it's best to, to give way. This is a hard one. What's that one there? Does anyone know that one? That's it. Yeah, give priority to oncoming traffic. You know, the, the, the Bible tells us to put others before ourselves, doesn't it? Very similar kind of thing. Give priority to others. How about this one? Stop. We all need to know this sometimes, don't we? Hey, we do sometimes. It's a, I really want to say something about that, but I'm just going to stop. <laughs> because it's safer to do that and approach this in a slightly different way. How about this one? Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs, yeah. And I, I put this one because actually, this is like a beware spiky people around, yeah? <laughs> you, know, do you, know, do you know sometimes you feel a little bit spiky, a little bit, I don't want anyone to mess with me today because I've had a bad day. Sometimes we all feel like that. And when we're feeling like that, we need to be aware of that and just make sure that Perhaps might, this might not be the best day to, to uh, start venting and telling everyone else exactly how we're feeling. Um, and actually, also be aware that other people, because we're a broken community, people that we encounter, sometimes they will say things that they probably don't really mean. 
It's just the mood that they're in, you know? So part of being this, this church community is these things will happen, but we're people of grace, okay? We do our best to follow God's law, to follow God's rules by the transformation of his spirit, to give way, to stop, to, to give priority to others, and sometimes to be aware of spiky people. And I'm sure that with every single road sign, you could find some kind of Christian analogy as well. Uh, the final verse we're going to look at now, the last verse we heard was this one. This is the affirmation, this sense of belonging together. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You will be my people, and I will be your God. You will be my people, and I will be your God. So we've talked about being gathered, being cleansed, being filled with the Spirit. And by being filled, that helps us to follow God's commands. And the final one's the most important one. This is the belonging, belonging to God. He will be our God, and we will be his people. And I just got one more thing to show you and I've not had a stick of rock for years and uh, I'm going to open one up because when I look at one end of the stick of rock it says Bridlington funnily enough because I bought it in Bridlington when I look at the other end of the stick of the rock it says Bridlington as well so I'm hoping that if I snap it in the middle it will say Bridlington a stick of rock, are they really hard to snap? Have I said, are they? Oh my goodness, what was it? Oh no, there we go, that's easy enough. There we I've, I've split it into three pieces and all the way through it, it says Bridlington. We know where this stick of rock belongs. It belongs in Bridlington. It was made in the John Bull factory. It is Bridlington through and through. And I just wonder with us, if we are God's people, that means that if you look right through us, if you kind of could break us open and see inside, would we say Jesus all the way through? Would we say God? Would we say, I belong to God? And if we do, then we should see that in the way we act because our lives are transformed because we follow him. So that's my question. Are you marked with Christ? Are you marked with Jesus? Is it running all the way through your body? Is it something that everybody can see in everything that you do? Because I think that's what God's calling us to be as a church. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that this is a new season for us. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us as a church. And we thank you that when we read your word, we can see how you bless the Israelites. Lord, we thank you that you cleanse us. Lord, we thank you that you gather us. We thank you that you transform us by the power of your spirit. We thank you that you give us hearts to obey. And we thank you, Lord, that we belong to you. Help us to show that in all we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Rich. That's given us an awful lot to think about, hasn't it? It's been really interesting. So, with that in mind, let's stand and show that we're Jesus through and through in the affirmation of our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. 
Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the music group are going to sing and play our next song, which is Purify My Heart. Let me be as gold. seated as Barbara comes to lead us in our prayers. Let's say the colic together. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Jesus, you came to earth to be like one of us, to feel love, joy, and pain, like us. You died on that cross, taking all our burdens so that we can be free. Your resurrection was after three days, and then you ascended to heaven to sit on your throne at the right-hand side of your Father. You did all this as you have so much love for each and every one of us on this earth from every nation, whoever we are, and whatever we have done. You want to bring freedom to our lives through having a relationship with you so that we can have eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. How do we start to bring to you 
all the things that are happening in our world, all the wars like in Ukraine, all the poverty in the world, and even in our country through the inflation of heating, food and travelling, all the greed, all the illnesses such as COVID and cancer, all the needless deaths as had happened in the school in Texas last week. We cannot even begin to know what those families and friends are feeling or even why people do such horrendous things to people. But Lord, we can bring all these things to you. You understand and you hear all our cries. And sometimes it all feels too much for us to watch or listen to. But that is why you want us to give all these burdens to you. You know the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We lift all these burdens up to you and especially our fam's friends and our church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now pray for our country and our church. We thank you, Lord, for our wonderful Queen and all the events that are taking place next weekend, especially in our church on the 2nd of June. We thank you for her life and all that she has given to this country and the world but above all, for all the love she has for you. We know that it is you who have given her all the advice and strength that she has needed and still needs to carry out her duties and the love she has for all of us here and abroad. We pray that this bank holiday will be full of joy, laughter and food and worthy of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. We pray for our government who have introduced financial help for those that need it the most to help stop the poverty through inflation of fuel prices and food. That this will help to stop households having to choose between food and heating. We pray for the church in this country and all the leaders that they will follow your leading and that you will give them the strength and wisdom that they need. We also thank you Lord for our leadership team here that you would give us your strength, love and wisdom to do all the things you want us to do and give Richard the rest of restoration that he needs during his sabbatical. Merciful Father, that these prayers names the Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Barbara. And now it's time for our final hymn. And it's the time when we offer the virtual offering basket around online with the links. And there's also um, a basket at the back for anyone who chooses to give us an offering. Thank you for all those who are continuing to support our church and our ministries in both financial and practical ways. We really do appreciate it. So let's stand now and sing, God is our strength and refuge. And please resist the urge to go down.
are called and loved by God the Father and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace and love be ours in abundance from God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now can I just ask Brogan and Pippa to come and join me for this last bit please. At our Monday uh, meetings of This Is Me, we've been doing the grace in a slightly different way, haven't we? So we're going to show people, aren't we, how we do it. And uh, we'll do it for you and then we'll ask you to join in. So it's the grace. Ready? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Well done. Can we do that again? So we attend to each other as well. Say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Well done. Please join us for drinks and uh, then go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.